Hey, what's up guys? It's Sunjoku. I have searched YouTube and there is no place that you can go to figure out how to make a fishing video or like how to take your kids fishing. And so I wanted to come out and I wanted to be the first one to make it. I really hope you guys enjoy this. I think it'll be really informative. Step one, you need to go to like Walmart, Academy, some kind of store like that. We're going to go inside. I'm going to show you exactly what to pick out. So step one, head to one of these stores and do not bring your kids with you. That is very important. <laughs> All right, here's the thing. If you bring your kid with you, you're going to walk into Walmart. You're going to walk out with one of these fishing poles. And this is the worst mistake you could make if you want to take your kid fishing. This setup right here is the same exact price, and you're getting a real fishing pole. I'm telling you, I know you're just going for little fish, so I mean, you're not going to want to spend any kind of big money. But you do not need much, but your kids will not enjoy it when their pole breaks in like the first five or six casts. Other than that, you just need some weights some of the littlest hooks you can find and we're going to get some worms we're also going to get a piece of bread to come out and just kind of show you guys how easy it is to actually take your kids fishing all right guys it's on joku we're back we're just going to go over it real quick do a quick little review went ahead and got our hooks the smallest hooks we can get from walmart got some of these red fat juicy red worms some people don't like to mess with worms i get it i also brought just a chunk of bread it'll work the exact same and then we got our bobbers now we're going to start off from scratch we ended up going with this little zepco 33 very easy for the kids to use it's a push button if you've never fished and you've never taken your kids fishing get one of these push button reels you push it you hold it down you you throw forward and you let the button go it's super simple and then you just reel it back in but we got to get it lined up first we're gonna take you guys through this whole thing step by step. Just push the button one time so the line starts coming out easy. I'll tell you guys, the line on these are kind of crap, but it is what it is. <laughs> Just like keep feeding it all the way up and through. Got my boy out here, he's Really excited to be fishing today. <clears throat> Been at school all day, finally been able to get out. Let me take my sunglasses off real quick. I'm having a little trouble seeing. We got attacked by a goose. And we did get attacked by a goose when we first showed up. That was not exciting at all. You almost got this. All right, pull the line all the way through the top. Give yourself a good bit of space to work with. Hold it and then just click your reel. Just make it tight so that way you're not pulling out any more line. You don't want it to get all twisted. You don't want the wind or anything going. I'm gonna pick my <clears throat> worm tip of this line is all curled up so we're going to go ahead and snip that off just have an old pair of rusted out pliers from the house now look this is where it starts to get weird on a lot of these other videos people start going in like now you got to tie this kind of knot and now you got to do this if you don't know this knot the simple fact is you're taking your kids out and you're trying to catch bluegill there's no such thing as like there's big bluegill out there, but none that you need a special knot for or anything like that. Any kind of special fishing training. Just put the hook through the hole. Give yourself a good bit of slack. <clears throat> and then just tie a few knots. Just like you're tying your shoes. Just bring it out, bring it back through. And then pull it tight. Do that three or four times. Whoa, look how long these ones are. Whoa, those are good looking worms. I have to find the big one. I think I just found them. And like I said, there's nothing fancy. You're literally just tying knots, like you're tying your shoe. Just keep doing it over and over. Mix them up, keep crossing them. <clears throat> Once you get two or three on there, it's not going anywhere, especially against one of these little bluegills. If you got three good knots and you can give it a good tug. See, I mean, that's tight. That thing's not moving. You'll have this little bit of excess line. Just get it crimped off. Please don't lose that cap, bud. <clears throat> Alright, so now we're set. We got our hook done. You got my worm. Hang on. I know you're excited. Oh, no. Worm escape. No, don't let the worms go. Alright, now you're bluegill fishing. So these bobbers, they're super simple. They got the spring on the top. You just push the spring down, and when you push the spring down, there's going to be a little hook, little spot where you could just kind of wrap the line around. Just get it in there. Wrap your line around two or three times. Get it in that little hole. Sorry, this line is rough. These brand new ones, dude. These springs will get you. Again, two, three. 
just let the spring of that, of that bobber's in place. It's not going anywhere. Go ahead and get your worm. I'm gonna do two poles today. We're gonna do one with bread, one with the worms. Already worms. You already got your worm? You've just been carrying a worm around? Yeah. <laughs> now these worms, it's really, you'll see so many people hook them different ways. Just go through a couple times, two to three times. You want a little bit hanging off so he looks a little bit juicy, but you can overlap. Daddy, he left and never even got, he like, he got out of the truck and then the goose was... The goose was right there on him? <laughs> yeah. So that's, see, he was scared. Yeah, hey, I'll cast this one. No, why go? <clears throat> All right, and then you just walk over to the water. <clears throat> My boy here already knows how to cast. He really wants to cast this one, but I just want to show you guys. All you do is just push the button down and hold it, come back, and then let go when you come in front. And that's it. Now you guys are fishing. Now see, it doesn't take long. He's already into a fish. Keep going. Well, we missed that one because he stopped reeling on it. You told me to. No, I didn't say stop. I said start going. Cast it back out there. I'm going to go ahead and get that other pole set up and we'll be right back. All right, now we got the bread ball on one, we got the worm on the other. This does not take a long time. Just give it a little bit of a cast out. Just let it sit and start watching your bobber. There you go. Now these little bluegill, they are literally everywhere. This is one of the most overfished ponds around my house, but it's still loaded with bluegill. We're gonna do the challenge, see who wins, bread versus worms, but it only takes a minute. And your kids, they're gonna get bored after a while, so don't get mad at them when they start to get bored or start throwing rocks if the fish aren't biting right away. But just give them a chance to get out there and experience it. Don't yell at them the whole time. Like, Try to stay out a little bit deeper, bud. Just try to encourage them, try to make it fun. Because the second that you get mad at them or that you think you need to be fishing, because I'm telling you right now, if you want to fish with your kids, you're going to have to teach them how to fish a pretty good bit. <clears throat> All right. So we have step one, went to Walmart, picked out our gear. Step two, it took you guys through, showed you what we needed, went ahead and got everything that we wanted. Step three, we're out at the lake. We got our pole set up. We're casting out. You don't have to go very far. You don't have to get out to the middle of the lake. You don't want to be real shallow, but you want to get out to where it first starts to get deep because that's where all these bluegill are going to be sitting. And you're going to burn through a good bit of bait. You're going to go through some worms. <clears throat> but it's just a matter of just being out here with your family. Always make sure you bring some food or some snacks or something like that. But just really kick back, relax, and just enjoy your time that you get to spend. Usually it doesn't take too long. Especially when you're going for these little guys. <clears throat> All right, looks like we got our first one of the day. Let's take a look at them. Good catch, boy, good catch. No, don't take them off, I wanna use them at bait. No. Now these bluegill and all panfish, they got this top rail of spikes across the top that go along their back. You gotta be careful because they will pop those up and try to hit you with them. He jumped off the hook. Let's get him back in the water real quick. See you, buddy. There he goes. Huh? All right, now that you got everything set up, this will not take long. You can get out with your kids. Do not have to cast very far. Just get it out there, just a few feet, just where the water starts to get deep. Your worm will take care of the rest, I promise you. Lakes like this, there are bluegill literally everywhere along the shorelines, especially in the springtime. So just cast it out, give it a few minutes. It should not take long. And when you're watching your bobber, they didn't have any weights, so my bobber's laying flat, but I mean, it'll stand up first, and when it starts to swim, or it starts to move, that's when you have to go ahead and just kind of pull back a little bit, give it a little bit of like a flick of your wrist just to get that hook into their mouth, and you should have the fish, so see how this goes. 
All right, so we've got something that looks like it's starting to mess with us a little bit. See how it's starting to swim. It's going against the water. Looks like he has it in his mouth. But you don't want to set the hook just yet, especially if it's just a little fish. You want to give him time because that's a big worm. It's going to take him a second to eat it. See how it's moving? Then we got him. There he comes. All day. And yeah. He's a little fish, like a tiny little guy. And I will tell you right now, your kids will be so excited to see this happening. Like, just to be able to bring this back and take a look at it and be like, oh man, look, mom, look, dad, I caught a little fish. Miles is over there trying to bait his, get his worm on. I always bring a little pair of pliers with me just because these little guys, they will. They'll take the hook down a good bit of the time. Let's take a look at them. Here. I did it. This one got it pretty deep. We're gonna actually gonna end up keeping him for bait. Get our hook out of there. Who's it gonna be, you or me? I'm farther out. Who's gonna find the first little fish? We're tied right now. And like I said, just make it fun. You're just out here having a good time. I remember fishing with my dad when I was a little kid. This kind of stuff will stick with you forever. <clears throat> oh, starting to get bounce a little bit. See how it's starting to move? That's not the waves. You can tell the difference when it's the waves or if it's actually a fish messing with it. I'll start look, twitching a little bit, start tapping a little bit, but don't do anything just yet. You gotta give them time to get that worm in their mouth and hopefully find that hook. Sometimes you'll sit there and you'll just get picked clean and your worm will be gone. Don't think the boy's little bluegill that he caught is gonna end up making it. Like that. Sat there, nothing happened. Time to go get another worm. <clears throat> now, a lot of times when you're using these little hooks, you just want to break off and just use a little chunk of worm. Like you'll hear people say that, you only need a little piece of worm. A lot of people that are going fishing for the first time they don't want to be sitting there ripping worms in half or cutting worms in half. If it's something you've never done before, you'd be like, oh, dude, this is pretty, this pretty gross. They explode in your hands as soon as you pop your thumb through them or if you cut them with scissors. So we're just using the whole worm today. Don't think it's going to be a problem. The boy's going to go test that little cove out. We're just going to go straight ahead. Go right off this little line. Got a little makeshift pole holder out of a stick. And then you got your lines in the water. Bring some snacks with you, bring a little bit of food, bring something to eat. It really, it goes a long way. And like I said earlier, they're gonna end up getting bored. They're gonna get frustrated, especially if the fish are not biting as well as they should be. Yeah, but stay in that dry spot and then you're gonna have to walk across that tree branch. Let's see if this works out. I can already think this is not gonna end well, but we will see. Dun, 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 oh, it wiggles, the stick wiggles. Oh no, it's gonna say, you gotta have to move. Don't go in the, oh, don't go in the mud. Oh, he did it, he made it. Got the reflexes of a cat. <laughs> but like what he, what he did right there there's a point that goes all the way out 
and you could see it it's kind of hard to see because the wind's blowing but it keeps going like another good 30 yards out there so now he's at the tip of where it's out of the water but it drops off on both sides now he's staying on the right hand side of it in the deeper water he honestly should have a good shot at getting into something oh and i think i did get into something this looks like a little bit better all right now that is a red-eared sunfish this is a decent sized one too I'll take a closer look at them and get a handle on them. <clears throat> we were, we were watching the boy. My bobber was completely underwater. <clears throat> so, like I said, they got the spines on top. So just be cautious of those. Slide, start your fingers, like make like a circle like this. Start at his head and then just push down as you go. So you can flatten down all those fins. And then, I mean, don't squeeze them tight. Like don't hurt them, but and give him a decent squeeze because he's going to try to flop around and get away from you. Well, I'm not going to be able to use my thumb. Ooh. But that is a decent red ear sunfish. They got really good colors. Let's see if I can get a little bit more in the sunlight. It's starting to go down behind me. <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, really good colors on him. He's got the little black part with the red fin next to it really a good looking fish really healthy got good size to them let's go ahead and get them back in the water thank you very much buddy Thanks. all right let's go ahead and our worm actually stayed on so we can reuse that and just keep going through i want to show you guys this real quick this is about probably 18 inches from my bobber to my worm. I'm fishing in about three feet of water. You don't want this just sitting on the bottom in all the grass and all the muck. You want it floating just above everything so it can still kind of move around and it doesn't get caught or buried on anything because the bluegill are going to be sitting right on top of this grass or they're going to come right out of the shallow water to come grab, the, grab your worm and eat it real fast. So you do not need to set your bobber way up high. There's a lot of different techniques for it, but when you're just at a small pond and you're out here with your kids just trying to have a good time, just put your bobber about 18 inches up. You don't need a weight, like I said before, you got your hook and then just a little worm on the end. About 10 feet out. And then you just play the waiting game. All right, so when you're out fishing, we were fishing that little point first. Tried to show you guys that where it went out in the water. The other thing you want to look for is like trees that are down in the water. This is a really good section. It, bass, bluegill, all kinds of fish are going to be hanging out because it's places where they can hide, come out, and then ambush whatever they're trying to eat. It's real easy to get snagged, so try to put your kids in more of an open section and have them just kind of cast towards the trees. <clears throat> but usually within a couple seconds, <laughs> honestly, maybe a couple minutes, You'll go ahead and you'll have one of these bluegill or something come out from these trees underneath and then just start smacking your bobber set the hook real quick and you're into some fish i recommend fishing around structure but if you're casting or if you're fishing with little kids for like the first time make sure that you can either cast for them or just keep an eye on them when they are casting because i mean look at it, it's snag city out here and i mean you could fishing stuff costs money you could burn through some stuff real fast if you keep losing it over and over but like i said this is where the fish are gonna be so it's like a damned if you do don't damn if you don't kind of situation Here we have another tree that's coming out. You can see where it breaks off coming back to the left. We're going to try to go right at the edge of the back end. Sitting right next to that little tree limb coming out of the water. Because, I mean, there's more of this tree under the water that you can't see. And that's where the fish are. They're sitting in all the branches that are underneath the water, just waiting to come out and just tag something. <laughs> Let's see your cast. Wow, that was fantastic. All right, this is one of the things you're gonna have to deal with when you first take your kids fishing a good bit of the time. They're gonna get snagged up, they're gonna get tangled. This one, I really don't know how he actually did this. Oh, I see. <laughs> did, I, well, I don't know. 
it was really a bad, bad cast. <laughs> All right, just hold your pole steady. Okay. You somehow braided this like, oh. All right, this is probably gonna be my final lesson. If you get into a situation like this, cut your line down here, save all this stuff, reel up your line, toss it in a trash can, and then redo your pole, because there's no fixing this. You'll spend the whole day trying to fix this. You'll be out of the water. You won't be catching any fish. Sometimes you get to know, know, like, all right, this isn't gonna work. Cut your line here, cut your line here. Start over, get your bobber off, get your hook off. It takes about four minutes three, four minutes to reset your entire pole. To untangle this is gonna take you 15 or 20. Save your time, get back in the water. You're not gonna catch a fish while you're doing this. All right, we're back, got them reset. We're back in the water. I said, I know I just turned the camera off and back out, but that did not take long at all. I did miss a fish while I was setting, resetting it. it. Took me and swam me all the way around. So hopefully he'll come back to get this worm. <laughs> Like I said, when you get into these areas, catfish love spots like this. So when you're bluegill fishing, you always have a shot at getting into a big catfish. What can I do for you, sir? No, because that's just all tree limbs all coming together. And that's the kind of stuff you have to watch out for. There, that's perfect. Stay right out there. <laughs> My little boy loves that push button reel. He's eight, he knows how to use my spinning reel like this, but just for casting and casting by himself and doing it over and over again and not really getting like the big tangles. One thing I will say about those push button reels, they usually come pretty strung. The line is pretty much crap, but it'll last you a good year to be completely honest, but it's real, <clears throat> you can see it in the line. It's real wavy it kind of gets all curled up on itself, but those reels, they seldomly get like, all jammed up to where you have to take them completely apart but if you get into that point of fishing to where you've been fishing long enough to where you're having troubles with that reel as this channel keeps going as I keep moving on and I keep putting these tutorials on to take your kids fishing and spending time with your family it's just we'll keep breaking it down we'll get more and more advanced as we go so if you guys are enjoying it, please click that subscribe button. It really does help me out, keeps me growing. And I'd really like to put a have a fishing channel that's all about taking your family fishing and hanging out and having a good time. Casted that one straight up in the air. Got something messing with the bobber. Starting to see how it's jumping. We just want it to start swimming or we want it to go all the way under. One of the two. If it starts going sideways or starts swimming out. Oh, he's got a fish on. Oh, that was a nice one, man. Oh, get get back out there. Get back out there. He's still there. Well, push your button. Push your button. Push your button. You have to push your button first. You reeled up too far. Make sure your kids are listening. Now part's getting it out a little bit. There you go. Now tighten it. Nope, you're good. It's all good. Get back out there and catch that big one you just missed. That was a nice one. And you said that was small. I didn't know when I saw him splash, I knew he wasn't small anymore. That's it, man. That's the excitement that you can have. He was right here. Sitting right next to that big log in the water. There he goes. Oh, man, too fast. Now look, he's legitimately like two feet off the shore. You do not have to be far out to catch these fish at all. And it's just one after another, as long as you can get into the right little spots and you could see them. That's good right there, bud. Wait for him to make sure he eats it. So you, you gotta wait for, you gotta wait for him to eat it. Let your thing go. I'm reeling just a little bit. 
That's good, right there. Right there, stop reeling. Now let him get that in his mouth first. Now it's, oh. sorry, I was talking to the camera. He's swimming, Ah! Oh. But that's it, when you can see him start swimming like that, that's when you really wanna set the hook back. Don't come in too far, right there. He'll find it, trust me. Anywhere around that log. You gotta give them time. A lot of this is so much patience of just letting them make their mistakes. It's the only way they're gonna learn is that they're making their own mistakes over and over again. Up, oh, you lost your worm. You gotta make sure you're setting the hook. When they start swimming, you gotta snap your wrist. Oh, did he take your hook? Nope, your hook's still there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try to see what was messing with the boy's bobber over there. Where's my fish? We're gonna totally steal his fish while he's getting his worm back on. See, you gotta set that hook. Little snap of the wrist. There's a bunch of them over there. Like a bunch of them sitting over there. Don't you worry. You can set my worm nicely. I will. This is just a nice little bluegill. I'm going to go ahead and get Miles reset. We'll be back in just a minute. Pretty fish. Really pretty fish. All right, guys, we're back. We're both got our bait back on our hooks. The boy's going to go back and try by his log. There's about 30 fish swimming around that log. There's two red bellies that are actually looking pretty big. <clears throat> Reel up, but I think you're tangled at the top. You gotta pay attention to that every time. Yep. Always just get them in the habit of looking at the tip of their pole. Because if they try to cast and it's wrapped around the front, if it's wrapped around once, it's still gonna cast. If it's wrapped around two or three times, it's just gonna go forward and then swing back. The last thing you want is your kid catching a hook to the face on the very first fishing outing that he's on. It'll ruin the experience right there. Snap your wrist. Like that, look at daddy. Snap. One quick little snap like that. Good. That's good. Right there. Don't move, don't even reel it. Right on the back side, that's where those red bellies were. Can I get him? Yeah. Got him. Bring him up. I got him. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he was real little, but that's the difference between snapping your wrist and not snapping your wrist. I still got one. You still got him. He still counts. He's a fish. So, it's two to three. You have three and I have two. Yeah, I have a feeling you're going to come back. Let's see if I can get him in my hand. Oop, there he goes. I was going to try to show you. He had really pretty colors. Snap it. Yo, your line's still open. You got him. Reel, reel, reel. You got to reel. If you don't reel, you... Oh, get him up. Up, 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 up. Oh. All right. Got a seaweed platter to go along with him. That is nice. He had some fights for a little guy. He did have some fight for a little guy. You got to get into those bigger ones that are sitting there. Yeah. Try going a little bit deeper. You're staying by the babies right now. He's probably going to flip out of my hand too, but real pretty colors on him. Really a good looking fish. I'm starting to get a bite. Oh, I got one. That's sinking him in. Ah, yes. I've been waiting for one of these. A nice red breast. I really like these fish. They honestly get pretty big as far as like panfish are concerned, and they're really aggressive, like a super aggressive species. But they got really good, cool colors. I really like the way that these fish look. Pop this hook out real quick. Give you a quick little look at them. I don't keep anything, so I try to get it back in the water as fast as I can. can. No, it's right there. That's where they are. 
Well, cast right there. If you get snagged, we'll fix it. Gotta learn sometime. Oh, got him. That's a nice one. Get him up. Get him up. Yeah, there's that red belly. Pretty looking fish. Really a pretty looking fish. I do enjoy these. Thanks for the catch, buddy. Let's go see what Miles has. Oh, this is a cool looking one. This is awesome. Show, show them their red eyes. Oop. Oop, stop, stop. They're little fins. They're not poisonous or anything, but they hurt. I'm not going to lie to you. You don't want to catch one of those. Trust me, I've got poked. He has been poked. This is a cool looking guy. Show, did, you, did you see their red eyes? Yeah, we're about to. It's got really cool colors. I'm honestly not sure what kind of sunfish that is. If you guys could help me out, I'd appreciate that. That was a good looking fish though. <clears throat> Just watch him keep going. Like I said, it's this is what it's all about. Go. Oh, snap. Go. Oh, get him out of there. That's a nice one. Get him up. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Come on. A big up, 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 up. Good job, buddy. Good job. You can come across over here big enough for the both of us. That is a great looking one. Cute. Reel up a couple more times for me. One. That's good right there. Man, that's a nice looking fish. It hurts because like, it comes back and starts poking into you. That, look at that. Like I said, man, if you guys could help me out with a fish ID on this, I'd appreciate that. That's a they're cool looking panfish. It's not a, a red ear. It's not a red belly. Oops. I'm surprised oh, he's back in the water. Well, get him back out there. Let's see if you can catch another one of these big fat ones. Don't well, get it in the water. You can't catch anything if you're holding your pole out here. Got your bail closed this time to where you can reel? Yep. Nice. Like I said, it's not about you fishing. Don't even plan on fishing the first couple times you bring your kids out. It's all about them and just the experience of having fun. But if you can find like, a pocket of these bluegill and get into it, they'll have fun for the entire day. Reel up a couple times. You won't be able to set the hook. That's good. Oh, too much. Toss her back out. Go reel in a couple times real quick. Stop. It's like right there, that log comes all the way across. He casted right on top of it. If his worm would have dropped all the way down on the back side of it, he would have been instantly snagged. So just when you're watching them, pay attention to this little stuff like that because it can really save you a big headache in the long run. I don't know, bud. We pulled a couple big fish out from right there. Yeah, move down there a little bit, and then uh, if we don't get anything down there, we're going to go ahead and call it, because we got to get home for dinner. Very good. Now you got that log in front of you, so you got to drag the fish over if you catch it, so be careful. Reeling super fast. Okay, now cast more this way. Like straight ahead in front of you. Perfect, perfect. Let it just hang out there for a minute. See if we can get into some of these bigger fish like the last two you caught. Those things were giants. No. Giant! And you tied the score. Dun, dun, dun! Why did your pole cast it out? No, not right now. I ended up losing my hook on that last fish, so I just want to watch you fish. Hey, I know the place to catch, so I can win. Where are you going to cast the wind, sir? It may be a small one. Hang on, let me fix your worm real fast. Try to catch me one more of those big ones. They probably came back to that log already. Are you getting me a bigger one? I'm just fixing this one. Go ahead. good be 
He's there. Wait for him. Wait. Step your. You got him. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, oh, slinging him. Bring him up. Nice. All right, man, that's pretty much it for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. If you do, please click that sub button on your way out. Miles, did you have fun today? Yeah. Day, I'll tell you, dude. This is like, we try to do this a couple times a week sometimes just to get out here and catch these fish. You never know what you're gonna get into. It's awesome spending time with your family. He's gonna remember this forever, just like I remember it with my dad forever. So until next time, guys, I'm Son Joku. That's the boy, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.